Is this what I think it is? Oh, I thought it was an ass crack. Character design is beautiful. Very detailed. What is it exactly? Is she a robot? <laughs> That's emotions. But what emotion? I don't know. Love? I'm guessing flashback. This feels so cinematic. Wartime. She's also a soldier. And then a divine wind just takes the letter into the stratosphere. Is it delivering it to him? <laughs> Music also really beautiful. The colors. Why does this feel like a movie? Violet Evergarden. There will be colors and emotions. That's what we've established so far. Oh. Okay, so she is non-human. Poignant shot of a, a doll. They even got that hallway sound down. A muffled voice in a hallway. Her name is Violet. The wind, it took my letter. Oh, did he die? He's dead. This is gonna be a sad anime, isn't it? We'll let someone else take the brunt of this lie. Prepare for heartbreak. Back to this. There's no way around it. Uh. What exactly is the relationship, or was the relationship, I wonder? So this is a flash forward. He bought it for her at that street fair. They obviously care a great deal for her. She just will not drop it. How can you even endure this as this guy? Which one of them reminds me the most of Major Gilbert? Just like Gilbert. <laughs> oh no, I was right. Ah! It is going to be a very long journey. It's, gonna, it's a very long lie. We're all over the place here, time-wise. What is going on? What is happening? I should note, in case it's not obvious, that I know nothing about the show's premise. So I don't know what to expect from the anime story-wise. But man, is it beautiful. I mean, I guess it actually is movie length. Almost movie length, maybe more than that. I know there's some supplementary material as well, but it feels very different quality-wise. Look at the hair. And the water. It's gonna take me a very long time to learn these country names. What is she exactly? Violet Evergarden. Is that just gonna be her full name? Well, she's an instrument of war, right? I mean, what do you do with her? I wonder what is the full story on that and what the range of her... her... Humanity is. Probably full. Full humanity. Eventually. Thank you for that exposition. Oh, oh, what are we gonna see? What's under the bandages? Silver! It's like Chobits if Chobits lady was a killer. Oh, this is a big day. You get your, your big lady gloves. You are now an aristocrat. Point me towards the nearest equestrian event. They're just dumping her here? Does she have any other connections besides Gilbert? Doesn't seem like it. I mean, they're trying. They're trying. A bit cold, but 
Then again, she's a robot. I was about to say that exact thing. I was about to say that exact thing, having just seen episode 6 of Vinland Saga. Spoiler alert. Hopefully it goes better for Tiffany than it did for that lady. At least the war's over. Now the real battle begins, the battle of the human heart. Is Tiffany disappointed? Gilbert's wish is for you to happily live here. What is the deal with Gilbert? I was pretty sure he was dead, but I mean, something bad happened, clearly. What well, went down? A lot of mystery underneath the surface already. You're the closest thing I have to a friend. Oh no, she took it personally. The war's over, yeah. You need to find a totally new everything. You know what thought terrifies me? It's a thought that I'll never be able to rest. Maybe that was overdramatic, but what I mean is there are certain things in my life that are kind of eternally good. Relationships with certain people is an example of that. Or just relationships in general. Good relationships is something that, you know, I've basically locked down for myself in a way I feel satisfied with and I trust in my own ability to have meaningful relationships. And I can basically spend an infinite amount of time with them and not really feel like there's any lack of anything. But in other ways in my life, there's a constant hunger. And I recognize that as being essential. If I really think critically and trace back the times of greatest desperation and greatest joy in my life. There's a huge connection between those states and what I was dreaming of and whether or not I felt capable or was advancing towards those dreams. People talk about there's no purpose, you know, there's no meaning of life. Everybody has things like that that they believe in or dream of. I think the variance is just how clearly those are in focus, whether or not they're consciously chosen, and then also critically how much one feels the capability of moving towards those or how, how much one feels like they are stuck or regressing away from them. And I think the, the greatest moments of existential misery, not necessarily circumstantial misery, but I'm talking about, you know, just self-perception and things of that nature, were times where I felt lost. Like there was no great thing to dream of. There was no great purpose. There was nothing to look forward to. It just seemed like whatever state I was in and all the miseries within were just the way life was. And what's really beautiful is there's an answer you know, there's a way out of that, which is to, one, find a dream, you know, find something that is exciting. Even if that just means putting an end to whatever is causing the suffering and then making a vow, not just through words, but through action to move towards that. And the moving towards it is satisfying in itself, you know, even without reaching the goal. There's always the danger of self-delusion. You know, people will rearrange the things around them conceptually to, to simulate movement, but actual real movement towards that is such a powerful force. And there's a weird irony to it in the sense that getting what you want in a way unravels that state. It's easy when you end up being able to climb a rung up the ladder to just sort of rest on that plateau and then all of your, your issues are kind of brought back into focus because you now have lost that feeling of momentum. And so I wonder, where does it go? Does it have an end? Is the journey itself the, the actual point of it? I say this because Violet has just had her entire purpose for being removed, something that she clearly believed very heavily in and gained a lot of utility from. And while I'm not a robot built for war, <laughs> I can connect with this situation as I've seen it so far in a way that's horrifying to me because even though the end of war is a great thing and was her function she's lost her purpose she's lost her whole conception of, of self and what she's alive for and so there's a really interesting question posed from this that what does she do from here what is her what new purpose does she find and the question i have is is there like an everlasting purpose are there ways to connect with life in ways that are perpetual and endlessly giving like family and friends are for me and then i think you know I, i've had this experience a lot of the time where i realize so many of the things i'm focused on i'm doing because i want to create building blocks for what the actual goal is but the the actual goal is so big I'm afraid to look at it like I would never dare try that so my mind immediately breaks it down into subtasks where it's like well you couldn't do that the way you are now so why don't you do XYZ that's more manageable? But that in a way, while it's great, you know, it's great because at least I'm doing something and it gets me out and it gets me thinking, it challenges me, I'm learning things along the way. It also is an avoidance of pain. You know, it's an avoidance of pain of looking at the, the grand, the biggest thing I could be, the biggest, most ultimate thing I could be. And so I sometimes wonder if I wouldn't be better off just gritting my teeth and trying to conceptualize that as soon as possible. Like what would be the ultimate thing without, without any fear, you know? And then to more accurately align what I am now to what I want that to be and see the steps more, more concretely so that there's no waste. What I suspect I'll find, even though it's not going to stop me at all from making these mistakes, is that like the stories tell, it's probably going to end up being things I already have. It's going to be the things that are already perpetual and endearing. And it's probably going to be a sense of self that's independent of any kind of superficial accomplishment. But there's just this weird, weird thing where you'll get there, you'll do all the work and realize it was there the whole time, but you still have to walk that road. That's how it feels to me right now. Maybe I just have to go on this journey to prove that to myself, to close that 
that arc, you know, close that circle so that I can see with full clarity the things that are actually important. Violet is extra interesting to put in this situation because she's also not fully human. So she has this sort of outsider perspective on what that experience will be and what meaning will be for people. And also she had one of the things I was mentioning, which is, I'm guessing something like love that has been lost. I'm solidly rooting for her, but I don't think it's going to be life in the Everland home. Although I could be wrong. Tiffany doesn't seem like the one. President of the country of Lichtenstein? A modest dwelling. Wait, he lives in the post office? I think I missed something critical. <laughs> oh, this is his company building. Whoops. Doesn't mean he doesn't live here, though. We know she likes writing letters. And we know she can write letters at all. So he started FedEx. I did try to pawn you off on his family, but I'll give you something to do. At least it's something. Something to focus on. Oh boy, it's this character. <laughs> There's always one. That one hair is bugging me. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> cool gloves. Oh. Not so cool now, are you, Cumberbatch? How many people know about her existence and what she is? Like, he's not really that shocked. He was more shocked by her boobs than by a robotic human being. Says a lot about him. <laughs> Says a lot about his character and his experience. Imagine being more flustered by underboob than by a literal Terminator. You don't know what I've done, Benedict. After all the people I've killed. I would have a lot of difficulty with that, seeing as the language is total gibberish. Can you just cut that off with like one hair? Just snip it. Terminator's delivery service. The subtitle subtitle is anime. I mean, you'd think she'd be better suited for all sorts of other things than male, but maybe this is their way of trying to take care of her. It's a competitive space, male delivery. But she eats and drinks. Stop trying to make the Evergarden household happen. That was him on the stairwell. I don't know why it took me so long to realize that. That was her last interaction. Holy crap. So she also grew. Yes, and I'm sure somebody else, not me, will be happy to teach you. Oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm getting a very bad feeling about this. I could be totally way off base. I mean, there's one very simple way to look at what he's saying, which is just that she's lived a life without fully comprehending it and probably has done terrible things and seen terrible things and she witnessed the death of her loved one. But there's another more sinister possible meaning, which is that she's done terrible things to people she's cared about without knowing it. This screams twist to me because there's so many interpretations of it, or at least of the, of the depth of it. And that would also explain why they would be so hesitant or so dedicated to tiptoeing around everything with her or not. What exactly are we talking about with Burns? What Burns? She's got a skill, people. Ooh, this is an important letter. We can't get this wrong. That would be interesting if they do it that way. If she's getting emotions of her own life through other people's letters. That would be an interesting plot device. Wow, wow. I honestly can't wait to see more of this. This looks crazy. It's such a bizarre image seeing this this beautiful tiny girl shredding people up in the battlefield. This is her therapy awakening. Oh, 
what is this exactly? Is this a new element in the show that like where they can directly access people's thoughts and memories through contact or something? I don't know why, but I got the urge to come back and look at this keyboard. I love how this X has a skull in it. One of their letters is just money. How do you spell your name? Virgo skull P up A but with a circle. He, also Japanese he is in there. But anyway, what did that lady just do? She like was able to read his memories through some kind of contact? That would be a very cool door to open for Violet. This kind of begs the question, are there other, other robots or dolls or whatever besides Violet? The emotions, human connection. I mean, that was probably what she was already arriving at in that first opening scene with the gem. And this clock, too! What time is it? It's XP. Mmm. I mean, given her character development so far, she's just going to end up writing about Gilbert every letter. Her arm, that was her arm that fell off. I love you in the auto memory doll. Holy crap. That was insane. There's so many amazing things about that episode. One of them is that it almost works as a complete story. I, it's, I mean, not really, but almost. It's like a, a short story or vignette or something. Because I think she already knows it and doesn't realize it yet. It's obviously in there somewhere. It's more like she just doesn't know what to make of it, it seems. I don't know exactly where it'll go. I don't know exactly what the, the episode to episode breakdown will be like, but I feel like there's a lot of potential for really great stuff just because you're taking a girl who's a blank slate, who's trying to figure out what she is and what it means to be a human, who may have a, a really dark past herself and a lot of things that are buried, but kind of a blank slate to explore anything because she can access the memories of other people and we can experience other things and other scenes, other stories through her letter writing. There's an element of it that has a huge potential to be soul crushing though because the things she's gonna come to realize are things that are, have already happened and are now gone it seems. There's a big question for her of what is she going to live for now. It seems like she's gonna try to retrace the past but that sort of doesn't answer the question of what does she do from here on out where what is she living for one of the ways this could resolve itself nicely is if she meets major gilbert's wish which is probably to live for herself but what even is she at this point you know she's just sort of this not a shell but as the president said this is the first time she even made a choice of her own volition and even though she's a robot there's something universal about it just because there's a weird line you know that exists for all all humans there's a possible awakening where for the first time you're able to look at yourself or look at certain areas of your conception in abstraction and it's kind of terrifying to realize that but for the right circumstance but for the grace of just whatever you may never have seen it you know because you don't realize that there's a, another layer when you're just living in a way that's connected almost deterministically from the way you were born until now. And it's not just a line, there are layers that just seem to get deeper with every iteration. What are people actually living for? What is the goal? You know, is it something that has been brought into heightened focus or is it just something from momentum, some, some assumption that was built some long time ago that filled that kind of default slot of what is the objective? What is the goal? What are the things that truly matter? She's some kind of robot or Android or I don't even know, but a search for meaning and purpose and I guess love. I mean, I may have all this totally wrong, but at any rate, very exciting. Really beautiful start. Very, very expertly crafted, I can tell at every level. The visuals, the music, the heart, the characters. So much attention to detail. Too much atten attention to detail. I, I kind of wish that guy, Benedict, would just pluck that one strand of hair out. I don't know why it bugs me so much. <laughs> But yeah, thank you for watching episode one of Violet Evergarden. Huge thank you to all patrons for making this possible. Thank you to everybody for following these series on YouTube. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've been stuck at the same subscriber number for like five years, so <laughs> it'd be nice to break that, speaking of goals. For those who want longer versions of these videos and also typically one week or way more than one week in this show's case, early access, that is all available on Patreon. Also, I think that by the time this video hits YouTube in a couple weeks, the merch store should be up. So if you would like to check out merch, that also helps support the channel. There are some original designs mixed with others that are copied, I mean, influenced by <laughs> 
certain shows like My Hero Academia and more designs in the pipeline, I guess you'd call it. All forms of support are appreciated and mean a lot to me and go a very long way and honestly are essential for me doing this and making these videos. I do my best to be conscientious when releasing videos. I do not put ad roles in the middle of videos because I personally, I hate getting served them. I've rejected literally every sponsorship offer I've ever gotten, which is in the hundreds probably by now because I really hate 60 second NordVPN ads and videos. So I also do not want to do that. So this is my rare, my rare pitch. Subscribe, check out Patreon, check out merch. By the way, I love you guys. Thank you so much for checking out the first episode of Violet Evergarden. Hope to see you very soon for more of what I'm sure will be a really fun ride.